I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. Yeah, there's a lot of Android phones to choose from this holiday season, but there are only a few that have 4G LTE connectivity. I've got two of those in my hands right now. One is the LG Nitro HD. It's available at AT&T now for $249.99. It's packing a dual-core processor, a big display, an 8-megapixel camera, and best of all, AT&T's 4G LTE connectivity, so you can get it in one of those 15 LTE markets. Then I have the HTC Resound with Verizon, also available now for $249.99, at least online at verizonwireless.com. Dual-core processor here as well. Big display, 8-megapixel camera. So you can see the similarities, so you know what we do. When they look similar on the surface, we do a dogfight. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these, you're not gonna deal with mail-in rebates. You walk out the door with no paperwork. It's easy at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look and see which one of these is the reigning dogfight champ. Is it the Nitro HD? Are they HTC Resound? We'll find out starting right now. You know, out of all the Android devices I've compared in the past couple of weeks, these two are pretty close in terms of specs and in terms of features. You have the LG Nitro HD over here on the left side. Now, this is available from AT&T right now for $249.99. It joins the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket and HTC Vivid. Uh, on the nation's second largest wireless carrier. So it's 4G LTE capable, and if you live in one of those 15 markets that's live and active or confirmed live right now, you can take advantage of LTE speeds. If not, it does utilize HSPA Plus as a backup. So whether you know it's 4G or 4G, as AT&T calls it, at least you get some level of next generation connectivity on the, uh, the Nitro HD. But anyway, just to give you a rundown on the specs here, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor. It has a 4.5 inch IPS True HD display, so a 720p display. And these are both pretty good to compare because they both have uh, 720p HD displays. They're two of three devices in the States right now on carriers that have uh, HD displays. You have the Resound, obviously here, the Nitro HD, and then you have the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on Verizon, all three have HD display. So an eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, Android 2.3.5 with LG's custom user interface and a 1,830 milliamp hour battery. Then over here you have the HTC Resound with Verizon. It's available now for $249.99. Usually it's $299, but okay, apparently they're running some deal online right now, so it's $249.99. And just to give you a rundown on the specs of this, uh, 1.2 gigahertz, excuse me, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor as well. So both have 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processors, 4.3 inch display over here, though it is again a true HD 720p display. You got an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording, a 1620 milliamp hour battery, Android 2.3.4 with HTC Sense version 3.5, so the latest version of Sense that we also saw on the HTC Rhyme with Verizon. And then it has uh, Beats technology. It's the first device and the first, actually the only one so far to have uh, Beats by Dr. Dre built in as a partnership with HTC or as a part of HTC and Beats partnership. So it's got that built in as well. And out of the box, you get a pair of Beats headphones, which is pretty cool. And you know, considering those are about a hundred bucks, you do, uh, you are getting a, a nice little freebie there, if you will. So both are pretty decent devices and both are running gingerbread, but you can see dramatically different uh, because of the user interfaces. So let's talk through what these come pre-installed with. We'll take a look here and you can see LG's user interface and then of course uh, HTC Sense over here. And first of all, with LG's, you can see it's grouped by applications, downloads, uh, and more. And you can manage apps and you can manage categories. You can switch them around to different folders and then you can come over here, close that out, for example. Let's go back to edit that again and let's see manage apps and then you can manage category as well and I'll show you that so you can see manage category and then you can move around applications download you can create new folders or new little uh, subsidiary areas and more then over here you have the tabs at the bottom you have frequent downloaded and Verizon wireless applications as well as you can you can see it comes with a ton of uh, Verizon wireless pre-installed applications over here downloaded frequently used apps and then all apps as well so let's take a look at what comes installed on both of these out of the box. First of all, on the uh, the Nitro HD, you get Amazon Kindle, you get the AT&T stuff, Code Scanner, Family Map, Navigator, you get featured apps, you get live TV, uh, MOG Music, Movies, My AT&T, you get Smart Share, you get YP Mobile, you get Zynga Poker as well. Now, AT&T's been pretty good recently. Not only are they allowing you to sideload applications from uh, non-Android market sources, but you can also come in here and remove the AT&T stuff. So any of that AT&T bloatware, if you don't want Navigator, you don't want Family Map, you can uninstall those. The only one I've found on this that you can't uninstall is uh, the Zynga Poker one. For whatever reason, you can't uninstall uh, Zynga Poker. But all the rest of these, YP Mobile and more, 
you can uh, uninstall and take care of. Now over here, you can get, and I'm gonna spin over to Verizon just so we can do a quick look through this. Backup Assistant, Blockbuster, Hot Pursuit, Amazon Kindle, Mobile Hotspot, IM, the VCast stuff, music, videos. You get my Verizon Mobile, NFL Mobile, Let's Golf 2, Slacker, Video Surf, Visual Voicemail, which is an additional $2.99 per month on Verizon, and VZ Navigator, which is uh, $9.99, as is uh, AT&T Navigator as well, per month. So given that Google Maps was installed on both of these devices, I really don't see a need to pay 10 bucks a month for navigation when you're getting it for free as a part of Google Maps. But the downside to these, you can't uninstall most of the Verizon stuff. Verizon's made it so the bloatware is uh, uninstallable, at least for the most part. So we can go in here to Manage Applications, and you can see some of the downloaded stuff that I've downloaded, but obviously, when you go here to all and you go to try and get rid of backup assistant or things like that, they're uninstallable. So, you know, if something, if bloatware's your, not your thing, you don't like those carrier installed applications, you're out of luck on the Resound. But just to show you, you know, the bottom here, capacitive buttons on both of these devices, but you only get three over here. Now, you have this one that serves two purposes. It's a menu button and a search button when you press and hold it. You have home and then you have back. Whereas over here, you have the more traditional Android layout, uh, at least in gingerbread, home, menu, back and search, so you get four capacitive buttons over here. Now build-wise, the Nitro HD is a little bit thinner, but it's got kind of a plasticky feel to it, and that's you know kind of hard to say without you kind of taking a look at it in store, because they all kind of feel plasticky. The Resound has plastic build to it, Galaxy Nexus has a plastic build, and I think you'll understand what I mean. If you were to take this or pick this up in the AT&T store and actually hold it, it just has a very lightweight, kind of cheap feel. I remember the first time I picked it up, I was like, this doesn't feel like it's worth $249. It feels more like a mid-range build quality to me, whereas with this one, yeah, it's plasticky, but it's kind of got a premium, nice weight to it uh, and a good feel in the hand. So that's something to keep in mind. Volume rocker over here, nothing on the bottom. Then over here you get nothing as well. Pretty empty, uh, empty area there. And then up top you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a micro USB charging port, which is covered by a flap, and then you get a power button. Uh, as well on your camera here on the back. Like I said, 1,830 milliamp hour battery over here. It's a pretty decent sized battery. That said, battery life hasn't been the greatest on the Nitro HD, but it's been a little bit worse on the HTC Resound, uh, which only has a 1,620 milliamp hour battery. Now over here, you can see the volume rocker. On the left side, you get your micro USB charging port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here with a power button, and then down here at the bottom, absolutely nothing. Camera on the back with a dual LED flash, and uh, because that smaller battery, combined with the fact that it's a true HD display, it's not as, uh, not as good in the battery life department, just to say the least. Now up here at the uh, notification bar, you can see the differences. AT&T stays in the top left-hand corner, whereas Verizon is in its proper spot here, where the network ID should be, and the date is up in the left-hand corner. But you can see the differences here in terms of the signal strength indicators, the battery life indicators, and how they look. Now when you pull down the notification bar, you get shortcuts up here. You get uh, silent. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, flight, or excuse me, yeah, wait. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, I said that too fast. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and airplane mode. I got a little confused there for a second. And then over here, you can see frequently used applications, and of course, your notifications would appear here. Now, one thing I do like about, <clears throat> excuse me, since 3.5 in the notification bar, is the ability to come over here and not only access Wi-Fi, but I can turn on or off my mobile network, hotspot, Bluetooth, airplane mode, and then I can come in here to HTC's built-in task manager and see, okay, all these applications are running. I can kill those and refresh it and get some memory back. Now, interestingly enough, I haven't seen the total memory meter drop below like 50%. You can see, you know, just looking at that, my first thought was, this thing uses a lot of memory with nothing running, which I thought was kind of interesting, but, uh, you know, oh well there. But that's the lowest, you know, I've ever seen. I've seen it at about 400 megabytes free, and that's really the extent to which I've seen it. So it does kind of run heavy, if you will, which is uh, kind of something that's interesting and I'd like to uh, understand more as to why it's doing that. But let's take a look at text messaging here so you can see the interface and how they look different, uh, different than this. You can see here I've already been text messaging one of the demo phones and then over here we've been getting some party notifications. Woohoo! You know, it's Friday night. I mean, come on, quick brown fox or the busy rumor dog, depending on who I roll with today, loves to party. So I'm going to come over here. Where is the party tonight? It's over somewhere in Atlanta because this is a 404 number. Uh, on the demo phone. So first of all, let's take a look at the keyboards on the Nitro HD. You can see you get Android keyboard and LG keyboard. So I can come over here and use the gingerbread keyboard if I want to, or I can use the LG keyboard. So it's nice that you get both out of the box and you'll notice a little pet peeve of mine is that right beside the enter button on the LG keyboard is the button to remove the keyboard itself. So I found that oftentimes when I was hitting the enter button uh, or even hitting backspace, I would often uh, inadvertently hit that button at the bottom of the keyboard would kind of disappear and that gets frustrating over time. So we use the Android keyboard, you can see portrait, and then in the landscape, a nice long 4.5 inch display makes it easy 
to type on. So we'll say the busy rumor dog wants to get into your party, yo. Get into your party. And we're gonna say yo. Woof. I'm gonna send that and see if we get anything. The busy rumor dog wants to get into your party, yo. Woof. And it's sending, sending, sending. It's thinking about it. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens there. Then over here, you get the HTC keyboard, but really the HTC keyboard is two keyboards in one. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. I'm gonna see if I still have it turned on, but I'll say the busy rumor dog is happy that it's Friday. Now granted, the display is a little bit smaller over here, but uh, HTC's keyboard's pretty good with auto correction. And of course in landscape mode, you get a, a nice big keyboard as well. Now both of these displays are absolutely beautiful. I, the edge to me slightly goes to the HTC Resound. Out of the three HD displays, Galaxy Nexus, Resound, and Nitro HD, the Resound wins the award. It's just an, an astoundingly beautiful display and I've been really impressed with it. Uh, and that, you know, obviously both of these phones have some flaws and some pros and some cons. But uh, the display I've been absolutely impressed with on this thing, just incredibly clear and beautiful. And uh, you can see it kind of right here. But anyway, so I'm typing, and let's say I want to switch over. I'm like, I kind of miss swipe. Well, I can do it on the HTC keyboard. It's an option called Trace Input. You can enable it through the keyboard settings, and it's a pretty unique feature. So at least on the keyboard front, the winner is the HTC Resound. And on the display front, the winner is the HTC Resound.